You're watching Cartel TV and I'm Jenny. Help us out by subscribing to the channel and liking the video. Simone recently talked about EV options within the three more entry-level tiers and the LEAF was positioned really well in its price range. And I check out this latest version of the Nissan LEAF, which for us reinstates its value as a viable zero emissions transportation. The LEAF is an electric that's been with us for a while now, so I've got high hopes for this latest generation. Okay, so starting with the design, and we can already see how much better it is. While the overall design has been around since 2017, it still looks fresh and not too quirky. This is a lot more than we can say about the first generation. It's a compact city car and it fits this description nicely. The ascending lines that are obvious from the side view add a lot to the modern look and the two-tone exterior is a nice bonus. The rear look comes together well overall as well. The two colored sections work well and the tail lights look nice too. The front is now more aggressive as well. There are no outstanding design elements, but all of it combined looks nice. With the angled headlights, complementing grille, and this sculpted bonnet. Everything's angled towards the center and makes the car look focused. Focused! The wide lower section with the lip spoiler and fog lights may not look like anything special on its own, but it rounds off the design rather well and makes the car look more solid. Yes, I know I'm praising the design of a simple city car, but I'm really glad that Nissan decided to drop that strange EV design language. And I bet consumers are too. This looks like a proper modern compact city car. And that is a big plus nowadays. The LEAF comes with an electric motor that gives 110 kilowatts and 320 newton meters of instantly available torque. It has a 40 kilowatt laminated lithium ion battery that gives it 270 kilometers of WLTP range. I should point out that only the European model was tested for WLTP, but it should have the same battery and powertrain. EPA range gives 243 kilometers. Of course, any official figure is bound to be a little bit optimistic. But for comparison purposes, I should point out that the Australian NEDC test from a few years ago gave 315 kilometres of range. Now, it's worth mentioning that the range does diminish on the open road, but the LEAF is a city car, so it's great for that purpose. Some markets recently got the E Plus version with noticeably more power and a longer range. So that one may be coming here soon along with the higher price and weight, of course. This would look like EPA range is spot on, but I have to point out just how unreliable these estimates are. For some cars, EPA is lower. For some, WLPT is lower. So for now, there is no safe bet with EV range estimates. Hence our safe range experience. Maybe we should trademark that. The fastest way is by using the Charter Mode Charger. Did I say that right? Let me know because I've got no idea how you pronounce that. Which would juice it up to about 80% in one hour. Okay, that's not bad. Now, if you install a Type 2 connector, you'll have full charge in about seven and a half hours. The standard home charger we expected to take forever. We tested ours and had 7% battery or 20 kilometers of range when we put it on charge. It was full by the time we checked it the next day, about 21 hours later. Now, when it comes to driving, the LEAF really is perfect for its purpose. 7.9 seconds to 100 is not lightning fast. For a Nissan LEAF though, I ain't complaining. But its confident push from zero revs gives a nice kick that is really great for merging on motorways, swift overtakes, and confident sprints between traffic lights. For its expected driving conditions, the LEAF will rarely, if ever, feel underpowered. The top speed is even less impressive on paper. But how often have you actually gone past 150 kilometers in a city hatchback? Now, the Leaf's meant to be a sensible electric city car and its power, range and performance all meet my expectations. Of course, there is regenerative braking and e-pedal. Essentially, it lets you drive using only the throttle pedal most of the time as regen braking can actually stop the car completely. It didn't take long to get used to it. And after that, I barely had to use the brake but I actually prefer the paddle shifter regen braking on the Hyundais. I really feel like that gives you more control. In terms of handling, the best description would be fuss-free. I wouldn't exactly call it fun, but then again, I had zero complaints about the way it worked in the past week that I've used it. If the range isn't enough, parking amenities make it clear that the LEAF is intended for the city streets. You get front, rear and 360 degree parking cameras, which makes this already compact car very easy to park. This being said, I should also point out that the LEAF is packed with nice safety features, but we'll get to that. 
Now, while all the members of our cartel team managed to find a good seating position, I have to point out that for some reason, there's no reach adjustment on the steering wheel, which is a bit of a shame. I do understand most of the higher price goes in the electric powertrain, but I do feel at this price point, it should be included. So make sure you do see if you can find a good driving position before you purchase the Leaf. Other than that, I find the interior quirky. It's spacious and functional. There's enough room, plenty of storage spaces, cup holders, charging points, easy controls, and relatively nice materials. Now, it's definitely not to my particular taste, I mean, the dash styling of the interior, but I do have to point out that it is really nice and airy and spacious. I do like the ergonomics in that sense. One of its quirks would be the design of this gear selector. If you thought the disappearing circle from Jag was different, this thing looks like it belongs in a 90s games arcade. Children in the rear will have more than enough space. In terms of legroom, adults will be pleased as well, but taller ones may find headroom a little bit lacking. The roof is definitely a bit on the lower side, so if you are going to be driving taller passengers often, do test them out in the back seat before you purchase. Um, the air conditioning does a great job, but there are no vents in the back here. And there are also no cup holders and no armrests, sadly. Now, this being said, I believe there is someone with amazing sense of humor at Nissan. Why? Well, despite the fact that there's no rear cooling and air vents, and you probably wouldn't find this feature on a lot of much higher price cars, but with the Nissan Leaf, you have rear heated seats. I'm happy. And uh, my pet poodle would probably be quite happy too. Meanwhile, fast forward to Australian summer, and I think I'd be missing those air vents more than I'd be appreciating these heated seats then. The latest Leaf also comes with an 8-inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, as well as voice recognition, satellite navigation, and a Bose sound system. So all that's really nice and useful, but I probably still give a little bit of edge to the system in the Ionic. Although, I have to point out, the Bose sound system in here is pretty tasty. Now let me show you why numbers are not everything. With 405 litres of boot space with all the seats up, and 1176 litres with the rear ones folded down, the Leaf actually has pretty decent boot capacity for the class. That is until you look inside. Yep, this bulge with Bose logo on it is here to stay. I haven't seen such a bad placement for a sound system since, oh, I don't know, some really dodgy aftermarket sound installations. And it's well protected, but why does it need to be there? Like, why couldn't they have tucked it in here or put it up here? It's just weird. Some of the more prominent safety features include hill start assist, intelligent around view monitor with moving object detection, parking sensors, front and rear, intelligent driver alertness, intelligent forward collision warning, intelligent emergency braking with pedestrian detection, intelligent lane intervention, blind spot warning, rear cross traffic alert, rear view camera with predictive path technology, tire pressure monitor system, lane departure warning, vehicle sound for pedestrian, traffic sign recognition, rain sensors, intelligent cruise control and more. So what's the verdict? While the Leaf is a really good car, it's really good for its specific purpose. That means driving in the city and staying close to those charging points. But for some people, that's what they want. The interior is good, boots deep and spacious, albeit spoiled by that sound system. It looks nice and gives a confident push. And finally, pricing for the Leaf is about 53,000 drive away. Now I think the Leaf is well placed in the market, but now we just need to see EVs in general become a bit more affordable. Thanks again for watching Car Tower TV and supporting our channel. So we've reviewed a bunch of electric cars from the Kona, the Ionic, um, even the Tesla Model 3. So is an electric car viable for you at the moment? And what would be your preference? Let us know in the comments and we'll see you next time. Peace.